lengthened, one stood. He chose the path of perpetual torment. In his ravenous hatred, he found no peace, and with boiling blood, he scoured the umbral plains, seeking vengeance against the Dark Lords who had wronged him. And those that tasted the bite of his sword named him the Doomslayer. Today, we'll be talking about the smallest, the Average, fastest guys. shotgun currently made on the market, the Gen 12. It is a 12 gauge semi-automatic weapon. Feeds from a box magazine. We're gonna be talking about it, we're gonna be showing it, and we're gonna be showing it compared to some of the best shotguns out there on the market. Today on Grand Thumb. Shotgun. The, 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 the average size shotgun, some would say oversized. Pretty big, Pretty big actually, big. yeah, very big. It depends on whose hands is holding it. That's a good question, yeah. True. Race. But before we start, we of course have to thank the biggest sponsor of the channel. The biggest sponsor of the channel is who, Charlie? The Sonoran Desert Institute. The, the Sonoran Desert Institute. A Whatever. big thank you to them for sponsoring this channel. We can't thank them enough. If you are looking to get your start in gunsmithing, they are the people to go to. We love them. Thank you to the Sonoran Desert Institute. And of course, what else could we not forget, Charlie? Primary arms. Primary arms awesome optics, you know what? And they are there at a great price. Thank you so much to Primary Arms. They absolutely rock. And of course, I have to give a big thank you to Norm Ammunition. Ladies and gentlemen, am I often forgotten, but most certainly not by me. The Talking about the Gen 12 today, I think it's going to make the most sense for us to directly compare it to a lot of the very popular military shotguns out there. So we have a couple different shotguns here. We have a Mossberg 590A1. We have the very venerable Benelli M4. And we're gonna be comparing the speed of two rounds and then a reload off of these different shotguns. Now, Charlie, you're gonna... So Charlie's shotgun shell fingers is going to be running the 590A1. He'll be firing two rounds, then he'll be reloading. Charlie has no dexterity. He's seeing a doctor for it, so we'll see how that goes. I'll be running the Benelli M4 and then the Gen 12, and we'll be comparing them directly in a couple of different drills after that. So talk is cheap. Ammunition is what, Charlie? Ammunition is provided by Norma. So we're going to be running Charlie through the 590A1. He's going to be firing two rounds. He will reload one. He's gonna reload one, and then uh, we're gonna see the speed. Uh, he's gonna be using, we're gonna be using a shot timer, and uh, we'll see what the speed is. Charlie, do you understand the course of fire? Yeah. Uh, left target. Le rounds. Yeah, left target right there. There we are. Okay. Shooter, are you ready? Yes, sir. Stand by. Ah! A zone, all day. You know, close enough. Let's go check Pretty it out. close, I got it in the A zone. So, I actually fired four shots. Yeah, that's it. So we have a slug with the uh, wad behind it, hence we have the, uh, the second hole right there. So two shots, it was supposed to be three, but okay. close enough for government work. All right, we got the Benelli M4. We're firing two. Mm -hmm. This one empty. Yeah, two. We're firing two, and then I'll do a reload. That's a nice shotgun. That's probably adjusted just to you, huh? It is. Oh, okay. Yeah. Shooter ready? Yep. Stand by. Oh, Lord. 
Five two five. Not bad. Got a four five three. A little, uh, all a little fumbly. A little fumbly. All A zone. Eat your heart out, Lucas Botkin. <laughs> yeah, lick my buttkin. All right, we got the Gen 12 here, which is magazine fed. We got two rounds in here. We got pocket reload, which is the uh, the best reloading. Four zero three. <laughs> Take that, Benelli. Now, obviously, a you know, magazine fed reload is going to be way easier than the tube fed reloads that we typically see on these more traditional shotguns. So that's gonna be fairly obvious there. So that's one thing that's really nice about the Gen 12 is it is a mag fed, but beyond that, unlike the Sega, it is a mag fed that works. All the Russian guys are gonna be very angry at me right now, but it hurts because it's true. So what we're gonna be doing right now is we're gonna be doing a recoil test. We're gonna be running these different shotguns and seeing how the uh, recoil feels between all of them. All right, recoil test, we have full power slugs. We'll start with the 590A1, which is a pump action shotgun. Not too bad, nice and uh, stiff. Don't say it. Nice, All right. nice and stiff. <laughs> Don't say it. All right, we got the Benelli M4 right here. Go ahead and try that guy out. The Benelli M4 is a semi-automatic compared to the pump action, so it should absorb a lot of the recoil that we were feeling in the 590A1. Yeah, took a lot of that recoil, feels pretty good. Benelli M4 is pretty legendary as far as being a very controllable combat shotgun. Next up, we have the Gen 12. Got a suppressor on this guy. So we have rounds, not a shot. It's way softer than the Benelli M4. Okay, next up we're gonna be running the build drill, which is six rounds on target, uh, about the seven yard line, and we're looking for all A zone, yeah. which everything is A zone. Everything, if you hit them. We're gonna be firing full power slugs. Yep. Give the shot. Hey, uh, after, you're, uh, you're up next on this. Yeah, I got it. Okay. I fucking I crush it. Right. Shooter ready? Yep. Stand by. That was a 163. 163. All hits. Nice, not bad. Let's go check it out. Yeah, that's not bad. Mikey, do you think you can beat that? Oh, for sure. You think you can beat Charlie? Yeah, do it. Okay. okay. Yeah. Fuck you guys. <laughs> um, can I beat Charlie? I have one way to explain why the answer is yes. Don't you fucking do it. Don't! I know, it takes his power away. I can't, he'll no longer be funny. I Maybe he'll explain. be smart. All right. What's this, this the line? Uh, is that the full mag? No, it's no. got one. Okay. Shooter ready. Stand by. Oh, one out. One, four, nine. What does one out count for? Is your penalty? Second. One second? What do you want, 0.25? We're not raising interest rates. No, 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 no. That was my wad. Yeah. Well, my wad usually goes. That was all in. That was all in. My no. wad was That's a C zone. Wad. So it is, is a one, four, nine. Nine. It's a one, four, nine. You're up. Well, I think Char what Charlie would have done uh, is he probably would have shot United off the target fuck that other guy? just so that he could say, oh, every single round went went through the same hole. You notice how much buildup and pre-excuses there are when it comes to you, Mike and Micah? All right, no cheating. <laughs> Stand by. Yeah, no, kid. What are you talking? What are you talking about? You're high as fuck. One, five, two, so I, I won anyway. No, you didn't, you had a second for a mic. It was a wad. Get in the comments. Was Micah's legit? Was it a wad? Was it an errant shot? It's gonna come down to a vote. Uh, loser gets fired. I don't care. <laughs> Next up is Mozambique. Argue about that one in the comments. It's gonna be two to the chest, one to the head, and uh, we'll see who wins. Yeah, we'll go. <laughs> oh, shoot, shoot, all right. Shooter ready? Aiming at the feet of the target, everybody see that? Yeah, uh, if you guys feel like rewinding, you'll notice this is much lower than his previous low ready. Shooter ready? Yeah. Stand by. Ooh, low on the head box. We're counting that? No? Yeah. Okay. That rectangle is BS. The whole head counts. No, no, no. Every other time I've been to this range, if you don't hit it in there, since we're gonna start a war, uh, that doesn't, that doesn't count. That's out. 
Bold words from somebody who lost the drill. Shooter, are you ready? Yep. Stand by. He's not even aiming at the feet. Look at that. Oh, look at his low ready. Oh, low ready. caught him. Yeah. Caught him. Wait, oh, 4K. Now we're gonna get caught I never 4K. started the argument. Shooter ready. I wonder what I'm, okay, let's do it. Stand by. Good. That was pretty good. That was 114. What was my time? Whoo, she's hot. You're a little bit closer than we were standing on that side. Okay, I'll back up. I'll back okay. up. All right. Aim it at the feet. Okay, I just want to double check. I'm a doctor. You get a second opinion. All right, shooter ready? Yep. Stand by. Ah, oh, safety. It didn't go up. Oh, fuck that kid. Stand by. So I guess the safest place to be is the A zone box of the head. Yeah, um, but I just want to get this. I just want to get that 120. Yeah, but I hit a better spot in the head. Uh, do do we want to pan to mine? So if if I do this, that's uh you're dropping. You're this jumping. shot's more lethal. Uh, that that's shot, a brain shot. That's like you could survive if you plug if it. Like Scott. If a slug went through the middle of your face, the whole face yeah. is gone. That could skim. Look at that. Look how many Russians are out there with just stupid spectrum heads and it just skims right off. All right, one per target. And uh, we'll see who wins this one. Yeah. All right, shooter ready? Yeah. Yeah. Stand by. That was a one, two, six. That was really good, those are all A's. Grand thumb. Good, good, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the wad. That was the slug. That's the wad. That, no, no. Look, there's a uh, there's lead on there. You need to go back to the Sonoran Desert Institute, dude. I would because they're a great sponsor of the channel, Sonoran Desert Institute. <laughs> Shooter, do you understand the course of fire? Oh yeah, baby. Stand by. Oh, one, three, two. What was yours? Uh, his was a one, two. Six. I guess he's mad at me. All right, shooter ready? Yes. yes. Stand by. Line break. That counts. They were all hits. They were all hits. They're they were hits touching the line. Uh, oh, no. What is That's a wad. Oh, let's it's obviously a why. One, five, four. This one will come down to a vote. Who do you think won? Get in the comment section and uh, comment. It comes down to style? It comes down to what you can shoot. And Charlie can shoot guns, but not cameras and guns. Uh, but I can shoot guns while wearing a lab coat, thank you Desert Snoring Institute, in what, 90 degree heat? Next one, we'll be shooting the ballistic dummy lab. Next up, we'll be testing the ballistic capability of the Gen 12. So we have a uh, buckshot and we have this bull... Why is it so small? I don't know, it never finished growing. There are actually a lot of people out there that can only move from here up. All right, we have federal flight control buckshot, pretty powerful. And uh, go ahead and we'll run it and see what happens. Who could have guessed that um, 10 rounds of buckshot would do that? Yeah, thank goodness uh, the government's encouraging us to get a shotgun. I mean, look at it. You know, it is not often that I'm actually excited about a weapon, but the Gen 12 is a weapon that I've always been very excited about because I think compared to a lot of firearms that we're seeing right now, it is actually doing something interesting and innovative, especially in the shotgun world. Now, to be clear, these new Gen 12s are actually different from the previous Gen 12s that I've used. So with these newer ones, uh, you actually have separation of the muzzle device off the barrel. So it is a short recoil operated weapon. So the barrel is actually moving independent of the muzzle device itself. Now to explain this a little bit more, we do have Cody with Genesis Arms. So we're gonna go ahead and welcome him on. Cody, come on in. Are we clapping? Yay, why are you? God, he's so, hold on, so tall. Some would say too big. Don't put that in. What's going on? You know, we usually never let uh, people who like 
are in the company talk because it's usually pretty retarded when they say anything. Try not to disappoint. You want to explain a little bit about how this mechanism works? So if you're familiar with the Gen 12, like Mike said here, it is a short recoil operated system. So the barrel reciprocates. There's no gas piston or direct impingement system that's going to cycle the bulk carrier. So the barrel is going to move rearward. That creates the initial inertia for the cycle of operation. And then you're going to have the semi-auto function of the shotgun with the magazine fed. This was primarily based around breaching, correct? That's one of the reasons that you did that? Yeah, so we had a request to build a breaching shotgun, and the request was how small and how short can you make it? So we built the SBM line, which is the suppressor breacher model. So it gives you the fixed muzzle device, allows you to have a suppressor fixed and not require a booster, and it gives you the ability to have contact with either a door jam or other objects and maintain the semi-auto nature of the firearm. That is pretty sick. Um, you know, from going from there, a lot of people are going to be familiar looking at the lower receiver here. So they are just DPMS 308 pattern lower receivers, correct? There's, they're interchangeable if, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Correct. If there was a 308 standard, then our upper could go on every 308 out there. Nice. The idea behind the Gen 12 was to create a upper receiver and a proprietary magazine so we could basically retrofit all 308s out there with a 12 gauge upper receiver. And then the buffers, because obviously there are a lot of different types of shotgun ammos out there from your shitty Walmart ammo to the full power buck and slugs that we were running today. So you can tune that um, with the buffer, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, we, uh, we try to fine tune it so you can shoot low brass 1200 feet per second out of, the, out of the box when you get it, but it's just a standard 308 carbine buffer spring uh, that you can get from a multitude of different manufacturers. Awesome, man. Well, I appreciate you explaining some of that. Uh, get out of here. That way we're not influenced by you guys. Thanks. Why are you trying to touch Cody? He actually, he was trying to do it before the cameras came on. I was just trying to do it back. Full disclosure, we do know the guys at uh, Genesis Arms. Uh, we've worked with them before on the previous review. So there's, of course, that there. But as is usual, um, we're not afraid to pull any punches. For this review, we did split the ammunition as far as um, the ammunition use. Full power buck and slugs are uh, hard to come by. So um, we're going to, of course, pay them back. So the ammunition will be covered by us when it comes to that. Um, and then these firearms do belong to them and not us. So that is our full disclosure there. But as always, we're going to be completely brutal, as we always are. Um, getting into it, there is one problem that you really do run into on the Gen 12, and that is that with the 12 gauge recoil, um, although these do have M lock slots on them, uh, I would not recommend using the M lock uh, for lights or anything like that. We've had uh, quite a few M locks just either rip or fail. So if you're going to run this at the light, I highly recommend you use the Picatinny mount. That's going to be your best bet when it terms of longevity on this particular weapon. The best part about the Gen 12 definitely comes into the action because, like we talked about and as we showed, the Gen 12 is a very low recoiling weapon, especially when you consider the size. If we were comp to compare this to like the breaching shotgun that we have from Remington, like the MCS, um, this is on order of a magnitude, I would say two to three times less recoil than that weapon. So when we talk about a breaching weapon and uh, the recoil that you're getting off of it, this is much more manageable. So I have a lot of good things to say about this, not just in terms of it as a shotgun, but in terms of it as a breaching weapon. And obviously we do have a full 10 round magazine on this guy, but there are also for breaching the shorter magazines, whether they be five rounds or less, um, that way they don't get in the way quite as much. And obviously if you were, you know, just wanted to go crazy, I'm sure they're gonna be making larger mags than this in the very near future. Now we've fired a lot of shotguns on Grantham here. Um, and when you talk about capacity on a magazine, it is always a problem because either you're managing your tube and you're just constantly reloading and you're emptying that thing and it's just a ass pain to try to get those um, shells back in there. Magazine fed shotguns are awesome, but most of the time they don't work. So having a magazine fed shotgun that is actually working is a big deal because Sega's kind of so-so. I understand there's guys out there with Sega's that run, run great and that's awesome, but these out of the box are just running extremely well. The ease with which you can swap magazines to get the gun up and running again, whether it be changing your ammunition type from slugs to buck, it's a very simple thing to do. And not to mention that low recoil, it is just phenomenal. And the best part about it in my mind is going to be the fire control system. And that is that you really don't have to learn it. So on this system, it is simply an AR-15 fire control. So what's great about that is your Manual of arms when it comes to this weapon is very familiar. There's just a few things that are going to be different, but you have your 
safe to fire. The trigger is going to be the same. Obviously, the triggers have to have full power springs to work on these particular weapons. And the only thing that's really different is, you know, obviously, if you want to cycle or anything like that, it's going to be a side charger to shuck out rounds or to clear malfunctions or anything like that. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's it's really great that they there, there's a reliable shotgun slash magazine on the market. And I would imagine that's a big deal for breachers or you you mill guys the only military experience i have is when i'm trying to get a discount at the hair cutting place but one of my favorite parts about this particular weapon is going to be the stock um, you have this really really generous recoil pad at the back so combine that with the really light recoil of the weapon it just makes for an extremely controllable extremely compact package and uh, i really love the direction it's going what's really interesting to me is that these really short barrels, due to the short recoil action, uh, the short barrels actually recoil less due to the moving mass. Now, that being said, there are longer barrels, depending on what you need to do, whether you're trying to shoot down drones or what have you. So really, this will fill a lot of different roles. And, you know, kind of coming down to it, I really want to say something terrible because I want to be spicy, but there's nothing really spicy to be said other than the m -lock, you're going to break your light. So put the light in the Picatinny and you're going to be great. And this is a incredible weapon. Now, is it going to be worth it to you? Uh, yeah, I think it'd be worth it to me, especially if, I don't know, like a discount or something, but it'd be definitely be worth it. <laughs> so guys, I think it's completely worth it. Um, I think it is a natural progression of shotgun technology. If you get out to a range and try them out, I think you're going to love it. So if you really wanted a fast, compact, magazine-fed shotgun, this is it right here, guys. Go check it out. Big thank you to the Genesis Arms guys for bringing this out and the Gen 12. But like we always talk about, Charlie, Training. Exactly. As cool as this gun is, if you don't have the training, it's not going to matter. So get out there, get the training. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Get that training from Bear Solutions, Haley Strategic. Where else can they get training? Onward research when the time comes. Very, very soon, guys. Definitely keep an eye on that. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. We got nothing else for you. We're done. Final dad advice. Micah, what is the dad advice for today? Dad advice for today is... Uh, Micah's a dad. I don't know if you guys know. Yeah. I call uh, daddy. Look good. Ooh, Take yeah. Take pride yeah. in when you leave your house. Um, a pet peeve of mine is uh, seeing people in pajamas at the store. I could be wrong for that, but just look good. Unacceptable. You'll feel better about yourself, and if you're single, you'll get girls. Question. I've woken up next to you in pajamas a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> One other thing, guys, don't forget about what, Micah? Uh, Patreon. Patreon. Onwardresearch.com. Uh, check it all out. Patreon. If you want to buy a sticker of Charlie in that lab coat, it's there. It's there. It's there. It's there. Go check out the Patreon. Answering questions. Micah's posting great photos. And then, of course, Onward Research. All of our great products. Go check them out. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you.